Hey guys, I am spending the entire day packing. I head back to San Diego tomorrow and I have decided to bring my art collection back with me. But before I get it packed away, I just wanted to share a little bit with you. Um, over the past couple years, anytime I travel to a new country, I try to seek out a local artist to purchase a piece from. I do tend to stay away from like vendor fairs or street fairs. I also veer away from purchasing art from artists in front of tourist attractions. I kind of find like those art pieces, because there are so many people that they want to sell to, they have a large amount of art and a lot of it is very duplicated. Uh, I find when you seek out smaller artists in different areas away from those tourist attractions, you'll find more original pieces. And you also have time to sit with the artist and kind of talk and get to know them. That's half the fun. Uh, one thing I do always advise is to never haggle with an artist. They put a price on their art because they pour their heart, they pour their soul into these pieces most of the time. And I just feel like it's kind of discouraging towards the artist when tourists come and they want to haggle prices on art. Now. If an artist offers like a buy one, get this much off your next one or some kind of deal, by all means, that's awesome. But I just, I feel like unless they offer it, you should never haggle. Um, you can usually find art for a pretty good deal anyway, especially if you buy it from an artist off the street. I don't think I've ever paid any more than 40 euros. But let's go ahead and just go through what I've got and kind of dive in. Okay, so this piece is from a small town in Ireland called Kinsale. It's a coastal town and they're really known for their vibrancy. Their buildings are all bright colors. It's a beautiful town. Um, I actually purchased this piece about 30 minutes after arriving to Kinsale. In retrospect, I really wish I would have waited a little bit longer to purchase a piece. That way I would have had time to kind of scout out other artists. Uh, but I was just drawn to it, I think, for the brightness. Um, but it is a digital piece of art. They took a photo and did their digital magic and kind of turned it into almost looking like a painting. I know nothing about digital art, so I don't know what they did, but uh, I typically am not drawn to digital art, but for some reason this piece got me. What I like the most about this piece is I've actually been to this exact area, to this exact bench, so when I look at it, it kind of takes me back to that day. Okay, so this next art piece is near and dear to my heart. It comes from Amsterdam, and I am so glad I took my time in selecting the right piece. Uh, this artist was so kind. He was actually originally from Greece, and there was definitely a language barrier, but he took his time and he was so patient. And he really loved showing, I went with my sister on this trip, so he really loved showing us all of his different pieces. He, he made sure to file through and thumb through everything he had to make sure that we got the piece that we wanted the most. And um, earlier I said never haggle an artist, and there will be artists out there that you don't need to haggle with. So he could genuinely tell how much we loved his art, and so, some artists will offer, if you buy one piece, I'll give you you know, 10 euros or whatever off your next piece. And that's so nice. And that's actually what happened in this situation. So I was able to get me an art piece and uh, our mom an art piece as well. And then as we were done wrapping it up and we were sitting there talking, he actually handed me a four by six, a mini art piece for free. So like I said, you, you, you should never haggle an artist, but sometimes there will be artists out there that want to give because they're passionate in what they do. Um, so this is a watercolor painting and it's, it's, a, it's another landscape type painting, um, but it's beautiful. It, uh, it's, I love it. Okay, so you're gonna be able to tell immediately, but this next piece is from Paris, and it is an oil painting. And this painting we actually found um, while walking along the Seine River, and the vendor, I thought he was the artist, but he was a vendor. He had a bunch of these just different types and styles and designs of paintings clipped up on a tent, and I thought he was the artist. So after talking with him, I actually discovered that he was selling local students' artwork for them. Uh, they were all in school, so the money was helping fund their living expenses, which kind of felt neat to contribute to that. Now, there were some really neat pieces, and of course I had to go with the cliche Eiffel Tower, but hey, when in Paris. Okay, so this next piece is definitely the smallest art piece that I own, and it comes from Barcelona, Spain. My husband and I went there this past summer, and we were in Barcelona about four days. Um, I know that after the third day of being there, I did not see a single street artist. I didn't see any artists out selling their art, and I was starting to panic. Um, I couldn't leave Barcelona without an art piece. There's just no way. 
And on our fourth day there, we were heading down to the Gothic Quarter, which if you haven't seen the Gothic Quarter, you need to look it up. It is just stunning. And there was a specific archway that I had to see. Like I was not leaving without seeing this piece. And so we had walked down to the Gothic Quarter and there was no artist still, like nowhere. I just, I don't know. So. We had gone up to the archway and I'm looking at the arch and of course I'm in awe of it. And I look down and there's a guy next to me sitting in like a popped up metal chair with one leg over his knee and just sketching away. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is it. I found my artist. And so I start talking with him and he's like, oh, I don't sell my art. It's just kind of a hobby. And um, I explained to him, you know, I, I need your art. Please sell me your art. I need this. His work was just, is beautiful and so the piece he was currently working on wasn't done yet but he just so happened to have just finished another piece and his artwork is done with just a fine point pen and it's just so detailed and so beautiful and he sold me this piece he sold it to me and guess what the piece was of the flipping archway that I had been dying to see like that complete miracle and coincidence I don't know but you can kind of see like how fine oh my gosh just beautiful I think I bought it for, um, for, I think it was 40 euros, but worth every cent. I just, I'm still in shock to this day that this happened. Okay, so this is actually a piece of art my husband got in Taiwan, and I'm cracking up because I was just kind of like asking him questions about it because I kind of forgot some of the information he had told me when he uh, brought it home, but uh, he just now realized it's double-sided. Like, how do you not know when you purchase a piece of art that the back is painted? How, like, how? Stuck it in the envelope, so, he, so he said, the guy just stuck it in the envelope and gave it to me. So he has not taken, I was the first person to take this out of the envelope since the artist put it in there. And now I just discovered, and now he knows he purchased a double-sided art piece. Um, he was looking for three days for a piece of art and the, the artists on the street were just non-existent. And this one is pretty interesting because this artist actually does caricatures. Car caricatures? Car Character? Whatever. So he does those and he sells those. Great. These he just does for fun on the side while he's waiting for customers to come and paint. Okay, so this next piece is my absolute favorite piece that I own. And I'm not just being biased because it's from Valencia, Spain. It's just, every now and then you find an art piece that just kind of strikes emotion in you and this definitely does that. It is made with oil painting and sand. And the artist I actually found in kind of like a back alleyway in Valencia, Spain, um, and he was a little crazy, but I really liked him. He uh, he spoke very little English, but the English that he did speak was, he was hilarious. So I really liked the artist, but the painting itself is what caught me. And I think I paid about 40 euros for it. It's pretty large, so I don't know how much I'll be able to get in this shot, um, but it's, it's beautiful. It's, um, got a total of three ladies in it. At first I thought it was just a three-headed lady, but it's actually three separate ladies. Um, and it's got that texturizing done with that sand and it's just, I cannot wait to get it framed. Now, none of my art is currently framed, so that's gonna be my goal over the next month is to get all these pieces framed and stored correctly. Okay, so I guess it's time to start packing.